This is John Allard and this is week 17 and 18 of my uh, fortnightly video blog uh, that I do with Pro Longevity. Today we're going to find out about the three things that you have to battle with if you're doing this for the long term and also some crazy, crazy stuff that is coming out from uh, the NHS and the British Dietetic Association. So join me over the next 10 minutes whilst I take you through my journey with Pro Longevity. So we're going to take you through the results uh, of where we are. If you've not watched this series before, do take a look at what I've been on. It's a complete life transformation. So uh, I'm uh, doing this as an extended program now because this is my change for life and I've set some long-term goals uh, where I'm trying to get myself from a state where I was three stone overweight, hypertension sufferer, a whole list of other ailments um, and trying to get myself to the state where my health is, is virtually perfect. Um, and about two thirds of the way there uh, in the space of 17 to 18 weeks. So uh, then I'll talk about these three challenges that I face on that journey. But here's the results uh, as they look uh, today. Um, I'm just gonna take you into the master spreadsheet that I've been keeping. Um, now at the top, you've got uh, the healthy weight target that I'm looking to uh, try to get to, which is under uh, 75 uh, kilograms. And uh, I've got the various bands. Uh, I've set five kilogram targets. I'm currently there and getting very close to my fourth target now, uh, where I've only got another five kilograms to lose. So um, at the end of week 18, you can see I reached 86.4 kg. Uh, at week 16, uh, I was uh, about a, a kilogram heavier. My weight does fluctuate a lot because some days I'm lazy, some days I have a lot of water intake, but I'm sure this is genuine weight loss. It's uh, great progress. It's almost linear uh, in terms of progress. So if we look at blood pressure, where I was at week 16, um, and if you remember, I was originally on double medication, uh, having been uh, assessed due to uh, an emergency trip that uh, uh, was encouraged by Graham. Uh, they, they found I had hypertension, I was put on double medication. I no longer take medication. I came off that, I think on week 14, uh, and I'm still off it. And I'm averaging, these are my averages, I'm averaging the blood pressure of uh, somebody who's in their early 40s um, uh, in the evening, slightly uh, raised, um, the yellow is when it's high, uh, but I have been overworking. I've been putting myself under tremendous strain. Um, and I'll talk about the challenges in a minute, but uh, where it's at uh, at week 18, uh, blood pressure wise, uh, is pretty darn good. Um, so only a couple of days where I had raised, uh, strangely enough, in the morning, um, but even in the evenings, uh, it's been pretty good. Um, and so overall I'd say that's an improvement. Um, so what are the challenges? And there are three challenges. So uh, the first one is personal. So when you go on this uh, uh, regime, you know, you're all for it, you fall into line, you do what Graham tells you, uh, you listen to your body, you monitor things and you work out a very uh, custom plan it's easy to forget about some of the guidance along the way and you also maybe get bored with some of the regime so you start cheating or you uh, just want to let your hair down um, now my big challenge and I'll be open about it was I think um, I I wouldn't have called myself an alcoholic, but I was a drink abuser. So if I did drink, and I could go without drinking for weeks and months uh, sometimes, uh, but I would drink more than one drink. Um, so I'd need to have several, uh, get pretty well drunk. And there's been a few days, um, summer days, when I've been de-stressing where I've done that. And that, coincidentally, is when my blood pressure has also risen. Um, so direct correlation. Um, but there's the other things that you sneak in. So the thing you're battling with is your sort of uh, 
uh, things you've had programmed into you since you were a child, the sweet sugary treats, the cake, the, you know, generally I don't miss them too much and I've found good alternatives, but you do get bored sometimes with uh, the quick and easy desserts of, of say, uh, a yogurt and uh, some raspberries. You, you crave for odd things like chocolate, you know. Um, now I do have the odd chunk of dark chocolate, but it's those things which are a little bit of a, you know, when you're trying to hit a target and you're trying to run a new change, um, I'll confess, sometimes you slip, uh, but I think as long as it's only 5% of the time and you can see the progress happening, the weight loss happening, the blood pressure getting really well under control, then maybe you can be forgiven. But I know I'm playing with fire if I take too much uh, carb or, or sugar or, or uh, alcohol. The second thing, so number two, um, when you're doing this lifestyle change, you're in a relationship with someone. Uh, I happen to have been with my other half now 40 years, uh, uh, for better or for worse, as they say, mostly better. Uh, so um, the issue is that I went on the course and I was properly monitored and I really got to understand my body and everything else. And if you have Graham's program, you understand that there is no one size fits all diet. So certain things I get away with, they have very little effect on me. Um, you know, so there were some moderately carby grains that are really delicious, uh, but my other half won't touch with a barge pole. She has an interpretation which is almost keto. Keto is an extremely strict low carb diet. Uh, in fact, keto is probably what she um, adheres to versus me uh, who wants a little bit more of a freestyle. So you have those tensions running uh, in uh, the family, uh, in the relationships, which uh, you often uh, just feel bad about or you, because you um, lose a particular argument because they won't listen, you end up cheating and uh, hitting the snacks um, because you just want to feel something different to the very strong keto diet that you're being forced to have. And I, I did say right at the very start of this whole program, this has to be something which you experiment with and that you feel happy with and is yours. And I think when people force something on you, like a keto approach, then you know that, that causes resistance. Um, so the third thing is that you're always, always struggling and on your guard when you're shopping because you know, you're now several weeks into this and you're looking for more exciting stuff. And the, the advice and the websites uh, are polluted by uh, organizations that want to sell you stuff, class it as healthy, package it so it's hard to see what's in it and it will have the killer ingredients of uh, too much sugar, uh, too much carbohydrate or seed oils. Uh, and those things absolutely abound because uh, they make huge, huge profits for drinks companies and for food companies. Now the really, really bad thing is that some of the health advice has been polluted by the influence of those companies and the NHS and the British Dietetic Organization, uh, the association has been badly impacted. So let me uh, give you my story on my journey of, of how I found this in play. Um, so when you're doing this, uh, I use electronic scales and they measure BMI, but there's a little bit of variance. It's an electronic measurement, not the accurate measurement. So I love to go on this website. Let me just show you the website. Let me just pop into that right now. Uh, this is the uh, NHS. Uh, uh, it's their weight loss plan, but before that, the page I was on before uh, is BMI. So it's my BMI calculator, but uh, part of that includes links if you're classed as obese uh, or overweight. Um, I'm in the overweight section now, uh, where you can get your weight loss advice. And this is provided by this austere organization, the British Dietetic uh, Association. Um, now, before I show you, uh, the crap advice which they um, purloin. Uh, let me just tell you um, a little bit about this organization um, because this organization actually is funded by a big soft drinks manufacturer to the tune of a million pounds. And this kind of playbook is exactly what goes on 
in the food industry with health concerns, whether it's the Olympics or whatever. And we wouldn't tolerate it if it was cigarettes. Uh, we just wouldn't, it's been outlawed, but it's allowed with unhealthy food producers to come in and back and support and, and, and cajole good organizations to give crap advice. So why do I call the British Dietetic uh, Association's advice, which is uh, remarketed by the NHS, crap? Well, let's just go into week one, and I could tear this up and go into lots and lots of stuff, but the general advice is good. Um, but as you page down, um, this is really where they get into the nitty gritty of food. And it's all about calories for the start off, which is a, a different philosophy. Um, but that's not worries, uh, worrying me. For example, here, swapping white bread for um, wholemeal and whole grain varieties. Fact is, guys, most of those brown and uh, nut covered uh, breads are just simply white bread dyed brown. I know the effect because one of the first things I changed on my pro longevity diet was uh, stopping eating brown, uh, healthy looking bread because it caused a massive sugar spike, uh, more than the orange juice. Um, and yet, you know, that is first up in their general advice. Um, and then it talks about high fiber, and you get onto a lot of stuff which is very rich in carbohydrates, including. Uh, porridge and oats and muesli and when you go on to the muesli uh, counter in Tesco's or wherever you shop you'll find that that is absolutely jam-packed with raisins and sugar and all sorts of things um, it just carries on like that so you've got uh, adding pulses adding rice rice is absolutely and pasta absolutely stonkingly brilliant to give you a big insulin boost uh, to push your insulin levels up and up and up, uh, as will a, a typical portion of baked beans, even if it's the sugar-free uh, variety, um, the carbohydrates in that uh, are quite high. Um, uh, you know, um, and um, reducing the sugar is only cursory because you know you'll end up uh, in a situation uh, where uh, the carbohydrates outweigh uh, the little bit of sugar added. And if you've still got the carbohydrates, you're still in trouble. So um, what about fruit? Um, you can't go wrong with that, can you really? Let's have a look at this. Well, you can. Um, so what they're saying here is fresh fruit, canned or frozen. Wow. Wow. I mean, Jesus Christ. Fresh fruit, canned or frozen. Now, even if you have the uh, stuff that doesn't have the sweetened juice with it, Fruit is now uh, genetically uh, created to be sweet for the consumer and it's full of fructose and fructose goes straight to the liver and if you want fatty liver disease take loads of fructose. Um, so the idea of having canned stuff as well, just crazy man, crazy. Yes, there are great fruit out there you, and you know, there, there's stuff that doesn't have a, 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 a cause for a big sugar spike or isn't too carby. But what they're advertising and promoting here uh, for the benefit of the food manuf manufacturers um, is just wrong. It's wrong on all fronts. Um, and yet this is week one of the British Dietetics uh, advice to try and get you um, uh, off your uh, obese track and you know all it's doing is um, giving a false sense of comfort and you know um, people go on these things uh, one of the effects that will happen as well that that they will have is that if they take these uh, foods which then turn into carbohydrates they then feel more hungry again because you get this insulin raise and then your insulin uh, triggers uh, a response in the body which says I need my next snack, my next food. So one of the benefits, one of the good things about this is a massive reduction in the need to snack. The fact that you can have a very simple breakfast in the morning, some salmon or some egg or whatever, and just cruise through uh, to, and even go fasting off the back of that without feeling hungry. So those are the three challenges. Uh, I hope that that was uh, useful. That's it for now. Speak to you again in two weeks time. Bye for now.